Are you stuck on how to do question number five from the 2021 AP Statistics exam? <laughs> You've come to the right place because we're going to talk about it right now. All right, let's dive right into this really good and actually really easy problem that deals with inference for categorical data. A research center conducted a national survey about teenage behavior. Oh boy, that could be a big topic. Teens were asked whether they had consumed a soft drink in the past week. Okay, that's a pretty light question. The following table shows the counts for three independent random samples for major cities, Baltimore, Detroit, San Diego. So first off, we have a classic two-way table here, and we have three different cities, Baltimore, Detroit, San Diego, and then we have the counts for those that said, yes, we did consume at least one soft drink in the past week, and those that said no, we did not. So we see the totals for each city and the totals for the entire survey. Suppose one teen is randomly selected from each city's sample. A researcher claims that the likelihood of selecting a teen from Baltimore who consumed a soft drink in the past week is less than the likelihood of selecting a teen from either one of the other cities who consumed a soft drink in the past week because Baltimore has the least number of teens who consumed a soft drink. Is the researcher's claim correct? Explain your answer. Well, let's first look at what the researcher is looking at. They're looking at 727 students or teenagers from Baltimore who said yes, verse 1,232 from Detroit and 1,482 from San Diego. So they're saying, well, yeah, I guess Baltimore would be less likely to have a student picked, teenager picked, that said yes, they drink a soft drink, because 727 is less than the other values. Is the researcher's claim correct? Well, let's dive right into it. No, the researcher's claim is incorrect. So first thing I wanna say, when you're answering any question on the AP test, answer the question, asked and answered. So some kids will go the entire problem talking about a whole lot of good stuff or maybe bad stuff, but they never actually answer the question and the question should start off by saying, or the answer should start off by saying, no, the researcher's claim is incorrect. Now let me prove to you why. Baltimore does have the least number of total teens surveyed out of the three cities. So yes, it does have the least number of teens that consumed a soft drink. But because the samples from each city are not equal, you cannot claim a teen from Baltimore who consumed a soft drink is less likely. Comparing the number of teens who consume a soft drink is meaningless without considering the sample size. The comparison should be based on the proportion of teens from each city, not the number of. So if we go back and look at the data, we see that there were far less teens from Baltimore involved in the survey than Detroit or San Diego. So no wonder you got less teens from Baltimore. You're naturally going to have less people that say yes or no. That doesn't mean that the likelihood is less for Baltimore. To answer likelihood type questions, we got to take into consider the size of the sample. So that is where comparing proportions is so much more fair when you have unequal sample size. So that's what I did down here to actually show you that no, Baltimore is actually more likely. So it's actually conditional uh, probabilities here because we're looking for the probability that somebody said yes, they have a soft drink out of only the Baltimore students. So if we only look at the 904 Baltimore students, 727 said yes, that's about 80%. Of the Detroit, again, of the Detroit, that's the condition, only looking at the Detroit teenagers, we found about 74.1% that said yes, they had a um, soft drink. Of the San Diego students that said yes to a soft drink was only 65%. And, and even if we look at Detroit and San Diego together, like let's just like Baltimore versus everybody else, we're still looking at a total of only 68% from both Detroit and Baltimore who said yes to soft drink. So my point is, is actually Baltimore students or Baltimore teenagers are more likely to have selected yes, they've had a soft drink in the past week or so. Again, point of this question is it's not fair to just simply compare how many you need to compare the proportion. So now they follow it up with, hey, all right, now that we hopefully understand proportions, let's construct a segmented bar graph to actually show those relative frequencies. And remember, relative frequencies is really just a fancy word for proportions. All right, 
So we have three bars, one for Baltimore, Detroit, and San Diego. So for Baltimore's bar, we're only allowed to look at Baltimore. So we're only going to look at the 907 teenagers that were in the Baltimore sample. Oh, excuse me, 904. I apologize. Of those 904, we would look at the proportion that said yes. So we would do 727. I already did this on the previous slide. But anyway, 727 out of 904. So about 80% said yes. And then if we look at 177, I was just thinking as I do my math here that this, this problem really gives Baltimore a bad name. It makes them look like they consume soft drinks. Now, maybe they do. I don't know. Maybe this is true data. All right, so that would mean the remaining 20-ish percent um, said no. So when I make the bar graph for Baltimore, I'm going to go to roughly 80%. So right around here, this would be the yes. The remaining 20% would be the no. And then I'm going to repeat that same thing for Detroit and San Diego. So here is actually a really nice one done a lot better than mine. Um, it's a lot cleaner. So Baltimore, we see about the 80-20. Uh, Detroit, we see roughly 75, 25, eh, again, it's like 74, 26, but again, just making rough approximations here based on the data. And then San Diego, we see around 65% yes, and then the remaining 35% that said no. Now, keep in mind, you could write yes and no in the actual bars like I did, but if you're going to use your pencil and do some kind of dark shading versus light shading, please make sure that you have a key here that shows that the dark would be for the yeses and the light would be for the knows. Make sure you have a key there that explains that. And pretty simple to make that bar graph, especially with the one that I provided for you. Now, there was a follow-up question back here on this page as well, down here at the bottom. And the follow-up question says, which city had the smallest proportion of teens who consumed a soft drink and determined the value of that proportion? So this is, again, I actually already did this, but this is us just looking at the proportion from Baltimore that said yes, Detroit that said yes, and San Diego that said yes. And now we can actually conclude that San Diego had the smallest proportion who consumed a soft drink in the previous week, coming in at 65%. Pretty easy math there, nothing too complicated. All right, the final part says consider the inference procedure that is appropriate for investigating whether there is a difference among the three cities and the proportion of all teens who consumed a soft drink in the past week. Identify the appropriate inference procedure and identify the hypothesis of the test. All right, let's take a quick break here to really make sure we understand inference. Inference is the idea of utilizing data or sample statistics, utilizing statistics from a sample to make judgments about a population parameter. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to say, hey, we learned some stuff from this data in the samples, the three different samples. What could we use from this sample data to say is true about the population? Now, the question that they specifically said was, is there a difference among the three cities that, in terms of the proportion that consumed a soft drink in the past week? Well, let's not be blind here to the fact that in our data, in our samples, there was a difference. But I hope somebody has taught you well that just because you see a difference in some samples doesn't mean there's guaranteed to be a difference in the greater populations. So yes, we saw 80 versus 70 versus 65% among these three cities, but the truth could actually be that the three cities are all the same and we're not seeing three numbers that are all the same because samples vary. So that's the idea of inference is actually making that decision. Is there a difference or is there not a difference in the population proportions? We already know there's a difference in our sample proportions, but it's all about the true proportions from the cities. So the first thing I recognize is that I do have three different independent samples. So I cannot do a two sample test. Some kids might want to jump and say, oh, I'm going to do a, a, a two sample proportion test. I can't do that because I have three samples. I'm not just like, if I was only comparing San Diego to Detroit, then I probably could do a two sample proportion test, but I can't when I got three samples. So this is going to have to be our friend chi squared. So this is a chi squared inference procedure because a chi squared could look at multiple different proportions. It could not, it could look, you know, we could do a single sample if we only have one, we could do two samples if we have two, but for three or more, we gotta go to a chi squared test. So this is definitely a chi squared inference procedure test. And there are three different types of chi squared tests. This is a chi squared test for homogeneity. 
And how I recognize that is for a couple things. One, it does say that I have three independent samples. That is a classic sign of a homogeneity test. And it did not specifically say, hey, is there uh, independence? You know, are, is, is this variable independent of that variable? That's a test for independence. And again, we're not looking at that, right? This is clearly three different samples. We're not looking at two different variables and trying to understand if the two variables are independent of each other. So that's the signs that this is a chi-squared test for homogeneity. So the first thing I did was write that down. So since the data was collected from independent samples from the three cities, a chi-squared test for homogeneity should be conducted. Now, the second part is to give the appropriate hypotheses for the test. So the null would be status quo, no difference in the proportion. So I actually have two different options here for how you could say this. So here's one, and then here's the second one right here. So one option would be, no, there is no difference in the proportion of all teens who consumed a soft drink in the past week across the three cities. Another way of wording that would be the proportion of all teens who consumed a soft drink in the past week is the same. And again, that's what I mentioned earlier. Yes, our sample shows a clear difference between these three cities, but that doesn't mean that there is a true difference between the actual population proportions. So our null would be that, no, everything's the same. There, yeah, there, we see a difference, but there really isn't one, and that's going to be our null. So the null would be that the proportion of all teens who consumed a soft drink in the past week is the same across the three cities. Our alternative would be, again, two different options. One, there is at least one difference in the proportion of all teens who consume a soft drink in the past week across the three cities. At least one of the cities is different than the other ones. Maybe two are the same, but the other one's different. So there's at least one difference in the proportions. And again, another way of saying that would be the proportion of all teens who consumed a soft drink in the past week differs across the three cities. So the alternative would be, no, they are in fact different. And then again, the cool thing about this problem is it doesn't ask us to actually carry out the chi-square test. I, I hope you would know how to. Chi-square tests are a little bit lengthy to actually do. So sometimes the AP test just focuses on you understanding when they need to occur and what the hypotheses are. So yes, our data does show differences, but that doesn't mean there is. So the null would be that the proportion for the teens who consume a soft drink is the same across the three cities. The alternative would be that the proportions are different. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense and you guys understand that. If you didn't, um, then hopefully watching the video was actually worth it. All right, see you in the next video.